Okay, good morning and namaste to all of you. Let's uh, start our uh, Thursday class. And these days we are doing Tetri Yoga mission in this class. So let's start the class with some prayers. Om Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo, Maheshwaraha, Guru Sakshat, Parbrahma, Tasmei Shri Guru Venamaha, Om Bhu Bhavaswaha, Tat Savitra Vare Neyam, Bargo Deva Sedhi Mahi, Diyo Yonaha Prachodaya, Asto Ma Satgamya, Tamaso Ma Jyotir Gamya, Mrityur Ma Amritam Gamya, O Musa Navavatu, Se Nogunatu, Se Viriam Karvavahi, Tejasvi Navadhi Tamastu, Ma Vidvi Shavahi, O Mishanti Shanti Shanti O. Let's do the prayer which is uh, written in this uh, Upanishad also, the very first mantra. Om Shannoho Mitraha Sham Varunaha, Shannoho Bhavatu Aryama, Shannoho Indroho Braspati, Shannoho Vishnu Urukrama, Namo Brahmane, Namate Vayo, Tvam Eva Pratyaksham, Brahm Asi, Tvam Eva Pratyaksham, Brahm Vadishyami, Ritam Vadishyami, Satyam Vadishyami, Tatmam Avatu, Tatvaktaram Avatu, Avatu Maam, Avatu Vaktaram, Om Shanti 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 Om. We started this beautiful Upanishad a couple of weeks ago. And last week, In the first verse we saw, part of that verse, the disciple is saying that may we both have the glory and effulgence born of holy life and scriptural study. And the teacher says, now we shall explain the secret of teaching of conjunction. This teaching is based on five perceptible objects. And if you remember, even in today's meditation, this is the technique we used. Okay. So he says, I will tell you how you can use it with the universe. The second one is through the luminaries. Third is learning. Fourth is progeny. And fifth is the body. These are the perceptible objects. Then he says these they call the great combinations or blendings. In today's meditation, we used this with the help of Yoga Nidra. Connection of each part of our body with the other part, but there is a conjunction also between those two. So we just kept moving from part to the part to the part and ultimately we were meditating. Okay, so let's look at, uh, we saw how he told us in the next verse, because he said the first the universe, what did he say about universe? He said, the earth is the prior form, the Purva Rupam, Heaven is the Uttar Rupam, posterior form. Atmosphere is the conjunction. Air is the connection. One should meditate upon the universe. So that means you are giving your mind a little bigger area to meditate upon. Instead of telling mind that just stay there. Mind doesn't want to stay at one spot in the beginning. That to give a little bigger area. Okay, so the earth and the sky and in between, tell your mind to just be there. Then mind comes under control. Now let's look at the second example he gives. So these could be used for meditation, for upasana. Ath adhi jyotisham agni purva rupam 
आदित्य उत्तर रूपम आपा संधि वैद्युता संधानम इति अधि ज्योतिषम ध्यायेत अथ मीन्स नाउ अधि ज्योतिषम कंसर्निंग द ल्यूमिनरीज ज्योतिष अग्निफायर पूर्व रूपम प्रायर फॉर्म आदित्य द सन उत्तर रूपम द पोस्टीरियर फॉर्म आपा वाटर संधि इंटरमीडिएट फॉर्म वैद्युता लाइटनिंग संधानम मीन्स ऑफ ज्वाइनिंग और मीन्स ऑफ कनेक्टिंग संधानम इति मीन्स दस अधि ज्योतिषम अपॉन द लाइट ध्यायेत वन शुड मेडिटेट Now concerning the luminaries or meditations upon lights, fire is the prior form. The sun is the posterior form. Water is the intermediate form, and lightning is the connection. Thus, one should meditate upon light. so this is another idea regarding luminaries and what do luminaries do they emit light like a stars the moon the sun the fire they all give light to us and the source of light is very well known to all of us certainly there is a light from the fire so he says fire is a posterior form or the prior form and the posterior is represented by him as a sun because sun is the source of all life and over here it means all the energy also life or energy when two mutually unrelated objects are enumerated then meditation is not possible because your mind starts to wander but when we try to tie them together then it becomes easier to meditate upon them so there has to be a relationship known between two things so that connection between the sun and fire is explained here as water meaning the moisture in the atmosphere water can be converted into its vapors only through the application of the heat energy and a certain amount of vapor is always present in the atmosphere and that is contributed by the heat energy from both the fire and the sun so that's why over here this rishi is telling us uh, the vapor or the moisture in the atmosphere is the connection between the sun and the fire they both do the same thing so whether you put a glass of water or a pitcher of water in the sun or on the fire it will evaporate it will become vapors so one common factor in both of them is what heat heat is the one which makes the water into the vapors so if water vapor is the conjunction between the two lightning is the means of joining them because he used the word lightning also over here vedyuta when two two things become homogeneous then there has to be continuity in their quality throughout it's like a two things it could be a two pieces of sugar put, put separate if you want to combine them you got to bring them closer together and then it becomes every part becomes the heat so over here the heat and the light energy in the sun and the heat and the light energy in the fire are separated from one another by a column of atmosphere and as a result of their heat the atmosphere get it becomes moist moist and the heat and the light principle express themselves 
as the streaks of the lightning. When we see the lightning up there in the sky also, this is how the lightning happens. Sir. So lightning connects them. So that's how the sun and the fire, they are connected by the moisture also and through the lightning also. Okay, so he's just trying to put this, uh, the whole atmosphere for us to meditate on that, he says. Meditate concerning the luminaries, so any kind of a light. Fire is the prior form, sun is the posterior form, water is the intermediate form, and lighting is the connection. And meditate upon light. And if this is not available to you, he says, I'll give you another example. Atha adividham acharyaha purva rupam antevasi utra rupam vidya sandhi pravachanam sandhanam iti adhividhyam dhyayet. Atha means now adhividham concerning learning. Acharya, the teacher. Purva rupam, prior form. Antevasi, the student, the pupil, the disciple. <coughs> Uttar rupam, posterior form. Vidya, learning. Sandhi, intermediate form. Parvachnam, the instructions. The discourses, pravachnam, sandhanam, the connection. Iti means thus adhividham upon learning. Dhyayet, one should meditate. Okay, so whichever is available to you, whatever, wherever your mind, the scientific mind, maybe the previous example will work. But to some people, this example will work. He says now concerning knowledge. The teacher is the prior form. The taught is the, the disciple, student is the posterior form. Learning is the intermediate form. Because the only relationship between a teacher and a student is learning. And the instructions is the means of joining. So if there are no instructions, if there's no discourses, there's no means. Thus, one should meditate upon learning. So this is a support for concentration. It's also called alambanam support. So to, in order to concentrate, we need some kind of a support. So over here, teacher is advising the new line of thought. And this is a very familiar field for the students. Others, we may have to go a little far, but this is very close to us. It's almost like a homely thing for every student. Very easy to understand. When we can contemplate upon ourselves and the teacher and the relationship which exists between the two. Because we know the teacher and the students generally come to meet together in an atmosphere which is vibrant with the learning. It's like a mind already is ready. Mind knows what to do. So there's a cord upon which the student and the teachers are strung together. And that is a cord of learning. The teacher talks about the visions of the truth. The teacher, which even Lord Krishna talk about it, teacher who has the experience also, the self-experience and at the same time, the scriptural knowledge also. Because that's what a true teacher is. Not just the bookish knowledge alone, but the experience also. So teacher often talks about the visions of the truth that the teacher has gained himself. And the students are those who want to experience the same vision. 
because they have the same kind of a thirst. My teacher is saying that Brahm is everywhere. I want to know, I want to experience that Brahm is everywhere too. Even if it's not the actual experience of the student yet, but uh, intellectually, we would like to apprehend that. That's why, why there's a vibrancy in the atmosphere where there's a learning like that. It's called a bristling atmosphere of mental unison. That's maintained. It's almost like a beam of that light going from the teacher's mind to the student's mind. So knowledge, as well as the wisdom from the mouth of the teacher. That's what he's talking about over here. He says concerning knowledge, the teacher is the prior form, the taught or the student is the posterior form. Learning is the intermediate form and the instructions is the means of joining them. So you got to pay attention to the instructions also. And then we got to meditate upon. Then let's look at uh, next verse. So from the outer, he is going towards the inner. Now he says, Ath adhi prajam mata purva rupam pita uttar rupam praja santi prajnan sandhanam iti adhi prajam. Again, Ath means now. Adhi prajam concerning progeny. Children. Mata, mother, Purva Rupam, the prior form. Pita, fire. Father, Uttar Rupam, the posterior form. Praja, the progeny. Santi, intermediate form. Prajnan, procreation. Sandhanam, the connection. Iti bin Sadas, Adhi Prajam, concerning progeny. Now, concerning progeny, Mother is the prior form. Father is the posterior form. Progeny is the junction. And procreation is the connection. Thus, one should meditate upon progeny. So if you want to think about where we came from, this body of ours. Parents are the Brahma of this body. So that's what he's talking about. So according to the Vedic culture, the relationship between the parents is divine. When it's rightly understood and wisely pursued, that's why the parents are the Brahma of this physical body. This is what Sanatan Dharma is. That's why what do we do when we get up in the morning? Or even when we finish our meditation, the first salutation to our parents who created us. So the previous verse was about the Guru. This verse is about the parents. They could be the form of a meditation or a concentration for us. But look at the divinity between them though. These days, there's a often a very unhealthy misunderstanding regarding the relationships of a man and a woman in life. And that becomes the cause of uh, almost a lot of terrible problems in life. So we got to look at them. These are the devtas. Mata is a devta, Pita is a devta, Guru is a devta. They are divine beings. Then mind is focused over there. And this mind, a focused mind, focused on divinity, can arise up. So this is the means of this verse concerning progeny. Where did all this progeny come from? Now the last example over here, it's even closer. 
अथ अध्यात्म अधराहनु पूर्व रूपम उत्तराहनु उत्तर रूपम वाक संधि जीवा संधानम इति अध्यात्मम ध्यायेत so right this body of ours in the body this jaw also the tongue also that means now adhyatmam concerning the individual adhara the lower jaw purva roopam the prior form uttara hanu the upper jaw uttar roopam posterior form वाक मीन्स स्पीच संधि मीन्स इंटरमीडिएट फॉर्म जीवा द टंग संधानम कनेक्शन इति मीन्स दस अध्यात्म कंसर्निंग द इंडिविजुअल ध्याय एत वन शुड मेडिटेट इफ द अर्थ एंड हेवन डजंट मेक सेंस इफ द ल्यूमिनरीज डोंट मेक सेंस इफ द Guru doesn't make sense if the parents don't make sense. This should make sense at least. It's very close to us. What follows is concerning the individual or the body. Here, we reside in this body. This has been given to us in this lifetime. So he says the lower jaw is the prior form. The upper jaw, the posterior form. so even in the body only a part of the body you can concentrate upon speech the conjunction as human beings we have this beautiful power to be able to speak the tongue the means of union thus one should meditate upon oneself so to the student this must be certainly a very easy thought to engage in the mind because it's so close to us and especially we are talking all the time the minute we get up we want to talk some people even talk during their sleep talking is so much part of our life so over here the student is made to maintain his mind an undercurrent of meditative thoughts upon the significance of his own act of articulation because we got to articulate when we speak without the upper and the lower jaws the vocal cords cannot create the sound and even when the sound is created without the tongue coming into the vigilant play controlling and regulating the sounds you cannot really make sense of the language so upper and lower jaw and the tongue in between that's how we make different sounds could be dental could be labial could be palatal all those different sounds we make with the articulation of these three then we say that yeah we have spoken clearly so this understanding we should have so we can just meditate upon that or concentrate upon that so before meditation it has to be a concentration okay so whether we want we, uh, the example for way is available to us or in between those examples we don't have to use all of them try to use only one for a long period of time and see how where does it take you so these are the examples he is giving for upasana five examples now the next verse iti ima mahasanghita ya evam eta mahasanghita व्याख्याता वेद संधीयते पशु भी ब्रह्म वर्चसेन अनादेन सुवर्गेन लोकेन इति इमा दीस महासंगीता द ग्रेट ब्लेंडिंग्स बिकॉज़ द ग्रेट ब्लेंडिंग्स ब्लैंडिंग्स टॉक्ट अबाउट इन दिस फाइव एग्जांपल्स 
यह मीन्स ही एवं मीन्स दस एतादीस महासंगीता द ग्रेट ब्लेंडिंग व्याख्याता एक्सपाउंडेड वेद संधियते इज यूनाइटेड प्रजया विद प्रोजने पशु भी विद एनिमल्स विद कैटल ब्रह्म वर्च सेन विद द ग्लोरी ऑफ द होली लस्टर ब्रह्म वर्च सेन अनाधेन विद फूड एटसेट्रा अन अन आदि सुवर्गेन लोकेन विद जॉइज ऑफ हेवनली वर्ल्ड स्वर्ग दीज आर कॉल्ड द ग्रेट ब्लेंडिंग्स एंड ही हु अंडरस्टैंड्स देम एज एक्सप्लेन्ड हियर becomes united with the progeny cattle food etc and with the glory of the holy luster wealth and heavenly joys you remember i told you this verse this uh, 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 upanishad is from yajurved so upasanas are part of the rituals also and when we do the rituals we are always asking god for something praying god we are your children please help us so this is this is called a fall with he with faith and devotion diligently pursuing to attain certain fruit god give us all this because we need it see traditionally upasana must have four limbs upasana the first limb is called utpatti vidhi that means a description of the presiding deity which will indicate to us the nature of the karma okay yeah? utpatti vidhi see just like when we worship the fire our worship our guru worship any kind of a deity and the second is called vini yog vidhi that's where the detailed instructions are the acts about the ritual vidhi okay vini yog vidhi doing it according to the details given in the scriptures we need yog vidhi then the third is called adhikar vidhi that's where these vedas they talk about necessary qualities which make a person fit to do the ritual adhikar vidhi then the last one is a fal vidhi the promise of the results because if you are doing faithfully certain ritual what will be the fall also so we find that almost all these items are given here in this upasana complete description of the fruits which are gained by such a pursuit he says glory of the holy luster the wealth also heavenly joy also progeny also cattle also food etc also so everything as a human being we need all that we know that all our karmas whether they are sacred or whether they are secular they produce some kind of a result some kind of a reaction so over here we are just purposefully asking for these fruits and this is called as kam bhakti also so sometimes we do the bhakti because we want those fruits but sometimes it's just in the general they are just mentioned over there because that is the outcome also it's almost like if i do the exercise properly eat properly i'll have a healthy body so if we are living in harmony with this nature we'll definitely we are helping others and we are being helped also 
So that's why some of these Vedic mantras are like that. But these are definitely for the rituals and for the upasanas also. It can be used for both. Now let's look at the next verse. This is the next section. Ya chandasam rishabha vishvarupa chandobhya adhi amritat sambhuva sa ma indraha medhya suprinotu amritasya devadharna bhuyasam sharir me vicharsnam jiva me madhu matmaha karnabhyam bhuri vishruvam brahmana koshaha asi medhya pihita shrutam me gopai. Pretty long verse. Ya means he, like a he who. Chand Sam among the sacred hymns of the Vedas. Chand Sam. Rishabha, preeminent. Vishwarupa, manifold. Chandobhya, from the sacred hymns of the Vedas. Chand. Adhi means above. Amritat. From the immortal. Sambhavuva. Sprang up. <coughs> so means that. Ma means to me. Indraha. Medhya. Medhya means the intellectual vigor. Medha. Saprinotu. Invigorate. Or like a fill it up. Saprinotu. Amritasya of immortality. Deva. O Lord, Dharnaha, Possessor, Bhuyasam, May I become Shriram, Body, May means my, Vicharshanam, Able and Active, Jeevaha, Tongue, May my, Madhu, Matmaha, Sweet, and agreeable to the utmost. Uttama. Karnabhyam with the ears. Bhuri abundantly. Vishruvam. May I listen? Brahmana of Brahma. Koshaha. Sheet. Asi. You are Medhya by the intellect. Pihita covered. Shrutam learning. May mine go pay. May you preserve. So again, this is a upasana done by the student. He whose form is manifold. Who is preeminent among the sacred hymns of the Vedas? And who has sprung up from the sacred hymns which are immortal? That Indra may fill me with intellectual vigor. Okay, over here he is using the, the Indra Dev's word. Oh Lord, may I become the possessor of the immortal revelations. May my body become able and active. My speech sweet and agreeable to the utmost. May I listen abundantly with my ears. You are the sheath of Brahma. May you preserve my learning. So this section is opening up with the declaration of a mantra to be used by the students for daily repetition. And this is technically called a japa. Before studies, just like we do our other mantras, this, this is also can be used. That's how we keep the mind actively engaged. So whenever we are actively engaged our mind into certain kind of a repetition, and often the repetition is a sacred hymn, invoking the divine ideas or ideals, that is becomes a job. We are repeating it. 
So it's like a contemplation and intellectual flight we are making with the help of these recitations. So this job is advised for the development of the intellect in a student. Because we need our ears also. If we cannot hear properly, if we cannot see properly, if our body is not healthy, how can we learn? So in this particular mantra, we are saying, God, give me all that so that I keep on progressing. I keep on using this temple of mine properly. So in this job, the student is addressing Indra. Over here, Indra really means Om actually. Or you can say Omkar. See the Om symbol indicating the conscious principle. And why I'm saying Om? Because connecting words over here, they tell us Indra is the word used, but actually it is for Om. He, because see, he says, he whose form is manifold. And who has the manifold forms? Only the supreme reality, the Om. Indra is only one of the form. Then there are many, many other forms also. So that's why the Indra word is used for Om. Infinite substratum for the finite names and forms. One infinite divine life sparks everywhere. So symbol Om is said to have many fold forms, many fold. And the another thing he says, who is preeminent among the hymns of the Vedas? And again, that one infinite and the immortal truth, one without a second, all pervading, perfect, is indicated by Om. And hymns are in the Vedas. And then he says, who has sprung up from the hymns? Every mantra we recite, it starts with Om. So this is the intellectual recognition of all pervading reality when we study the Vedas, Om. And the Vedas prescribe the means also. And that's what we are learning, the means how to achieve that Om. So all the Vedas, they exhaustively deal, deals with the method of reaching there and removing the obstacles on the path of the seeker. So that's why he says, who has sprung up from the hymns? That's the Om. So addressing this Om, the name of the infinite, the student desires that he must be filled with intellectual vigor. Intellectual vigor we need so that we can understand what is implied in those Vedas also. What is the deep significance of these Upanishads also? Not only is it sufficient uh, that we have a very powerful intellect uh, or a wonderful intellect, uh, but we need also healthy life uh, in this body too. Because intellect is a part of our subtle body. Subtle body is residing in the physical body. So if the physical body becomes weak, the subtle body becomes very weak too. So we need to take care of this physical body, healthy life. And then he says that speech, we got to have the sweet and agreeable way of expression in our speech. It's very important. So this mantra is suggesting, uh, or is suggestions it's uh, giving it to us uh, so that we can live a better, in a better system where the physical health is uh, utmost. 
and intellectual accomplishments, they can go hand in hand too. See, that is a balanced, balanced body. That's what yoga teaches us. Healthy body, calm mind, and a sharp intellect. And these mantras, that's what are said in the Upanishads. So this mantra is rounded up with an assertion that Om is the sheath of Abraham. I know I have gone a little bit over the time, but uh, uh, let me just give you a little hint over here, then finish up next week. So sheath of Brahm. How Om is the sheath of Brahm? Sheath over here means a container. So very container of the Brahm is Om. See, let me give you an example. If you have put tea in a teapot, what do you say to somebody? Bring the teapot to me. In fact, you want the tea, but you say bring the teapot, or you bring that cup, but actually you want the tea. So the same way, just like that pot or the cup is the sheath for the the same way this Om is the sheath for the Brahma. So Om symbol is the sheath of Brahm and therefore invoking Om. What are you doing? You're invoking Supreme. You're invoking that reality which is the truth, which is Supreme, which is everywhere. It's just a container. So this is like a upasana. upasana. When an intellect has fully developed, individual or the student has acquired sweet speech. And when the mind is ready to receive new ideas, only then that individual is ready, is fit. So healthy body, sharp, subtle mind, sweet speech, sweet also, truthful also. Then a student is fit to pursue the rituals, uh, rituals which will give wealth. which he mentioned over here. Wealth. Okay, it could be a wealth, sure, outwardly wealth, we learned in Bhagavad Gita. Whatever we need, God provides. Whatever he has provided, he gives us the blessings to keep also. Yoga and shame, those two words are often used. So wealth, our real wealth as a student is what? Connection with God. That is the real wealth for a student. I always feel that I am connected with the Brahma. So let's stop it here. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Visheshyate Om Shanti 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 Thank you very much.